So welcome to the MG4. Now, as you know, I was driving the older MG EV and I loved it. Had it for a couple of years, really loved it. And this upgraded version is also fantastic, proved by the sales. Now, Hendy has have given us a trophy version, the trophy model in Volcano orange to take out for the day so we're going to drop a link which you can follow if you want more information about this car but we're also going to take you on a whip round of all of the features this is a fantastic family car it's a hatchback with tons of room and if you're tall you can still fit in the back down the side they made some changes to the wing mirrors the alloy wheels 17 inch come at a standard and also the trim the key with this car though, excuse the plane, is that for almost 27 grand, you're getting an awful lot of family car. And that's why sales are going through the roof. Quick look at these spoilers. Some people are not loving them, but you know, it's an upgrade. It's a funky upgrade. And a really huge amount of boot space. How much is it, Tina? 363 liters worth of boot space now here's the thing that i find really interesting and that i have never seen before when i first got in here i was like well where's the on off button it's really confusing but when you get in and sit down your monitors come alive then you put your foot on the brake and the car enters ready mode and then you simply put it in drive and drive off. There isn't a start button. It's really weird, but no doubt one of those things you just get used to really fast. The interesting thing about this MG is it's the first one of their EVs to have been built from the ground up. The others have been builds that have been adapted from ICE cars. Um, whereas this one has been specially designed and specially built as an EV. One of the reasons this car is doing so well um, in this kind of tight family bracket compared to other cars like Zoe's, it's not just the space, it's not just the design, it, it's always down to that thing, <laughs> range. Um, and so as standard, they're saying 218, um, miles but if you get the extended range model then you could be looking at 323 miles that's a huge leap up from the MG that I was driving before you know things are changing all the time the interior's got quite a few changes um, from the old ZS the, the biggest change is that these dials here, you know, your dial that takes you from park to neutral to drive, uh, is, is way up. They've, they've bought it up here. We've lost much of that central console and the screens have changed size. Um, so it's quite dramatic, really, the change in here. The main disadvantage, I think, of, of bringing everything up here in this way is actually, I don't like this. It feels like I'm gonna bash my knee on it or like it feels, it doesn't feel right. It feels like I'm playing around, trying to find, trying to find the dial. So the question is, have they done what they intended to do, which is simplify everything. So where your regenerative braking stuff used to be on your steering wheel, it's now been moved to uh, this, this lovely little screen. The answer really is yes and no, because yes, everything seems more a little bit more sleek, frankly, um, in terms of the controls on the steering wheel and, and the amount of buttons. Not that it was bad. I never had a problem with the design before. But, but there's more information on this screen now. And um, there are more options. So for example, you now have uh, five drive modes displayed on this screen where before it used to be on here. Snow, eco, normal, sport and custom. Everything is on here. If 
you want Apple Pay, which, Apple Pay, Apple Play, which you can have. Um, you have to plug it in. That's a bit of a, a shame. And sat nav doesn't come as standard either. So you're paying extra for sat nav. But then if you're plugging your phone in and you've got maps, maybe you don't need it anyway. Um, so there's a lot going on now on that screen. Um, and that feels a bit messy to me, no doubt. I'd get used to used to it, I guess. Um, but, but juggling between the two screens, there feels like almost too much going on on the screens for me. But that seems to be the general gist of things. More going on on screens, less going on in terms of dials and buttons. It's much of a muchness inside. It's great for storage, this car. It is all around a really good family car. The trim on it, I don't know if you've noticed, is really subtle. It's just a little blue stitch here that makes it stand out that's really nice. Standard glove compartment. Your phone goes here uh, just in front of that park uh, neutral drive dial. Um, and you've got storage in the middle, storage here and storage, plenty of storage um, in the sides. Now they do call this a city car. Well, some reviewers do. I, I disagree. I don't think it is a large city car. I think it's just, you know, for zipping around the country lanes, it's just as perfect. It's a fantastic family car. What can I say? It's got five star end cap rating. It's even got an 80,000 mile seven year warranty. I think this, with its, with its new extended range particularly, is still a brilliant family car, especially for the price.